We're going to continue the joy of spreadsheets in the context of running simulations. So you should have a sheet that looks like uh, this that's going to contain the assignments that we're working on and a little bit of an outline why we're doing this. If you don't have this as a hard copy, it'll be available on the lesson plans as a link. I'm going to run through some of these new concepts for you. And then you'll notice that there's some old concepts that are probably going to come up in here as well. So I'm going to jump straight to a spreadsheet and I'm going to use the uh, Google Sheets. You can use Excel on this. It's probably a little better. All right, the first thing is a this thing called Rand Between, which is spreadsheet language for can you generate a random number between one and whatever you want. It doesn't even have to be between one and whatever you want. It's just a random number over any interval you want. So I'm going to use that in the context of rolling a die. So I have die number one, die number two, and I'm going to get a total. And you see in this simulation, I have rolled a three and then a six for a total of nine. So how did I get that? If I click on that cell, it says up here in the formula bar equals rand between parentheses one comma six. That says that the spreadsheet's going to just generate a random number between one and six. It generated a three. I can drag that down if I'd like. And now I've just generated more random dice rolls. I could drag that one down if I'd like. And over here on the far right hand column, I thought I dragged that down, but it looks like I didn't. Well, I did. Just slow. And over here, I just summed up the total equals B8 plus C8. So I'm going to drag that down as well. Okay, so you notice that this should all make sense. Like over here, I got lucky, a 6 and a 6 for a total of 12. But if I look at my totals, 8, 11, 12, 10, as I go over here and do other things, and I'm just going to hit some enters, and hmm, it's not working how I thought it would right now, so let's do this. I'm going to go down here to this last column and I'm going to drag down another. Now, I want your eyeballs to watch 8, 11, 12, 10 up above. When I drag down another, holy cow, everything changed. 11, 4, 7, 6. I've got new dice rolls over here. So that's what happens when your spreadsheet is active. It may keep uh, re redoing the random dice tolls, basically rerunning your random rolls. And for some things, you don't care if that happens. Okay, watch, I'm going to do another operation and everything changed again. That may or may not bug you, but if for some reason you needed your results to stay, then this is what you would do. I'm going to just make part of this stay, like maybe about the top half stay, and the other half I'm going to leave active. So I highlight it, and what I'm going to do right here is the space special. So I'm going to go up to Edit, and I'm going to hit Copy. So now I'm going to copy this, but I'm not going to paste it somewhere else on the spreadsheet. I'm going to paste it right back where it was. So then I go to Edit, and normally you do Paste, but I'm going to hit Paste Special. Now they give you a lot of options. I'm going to say Values Only, but you could figure out what the rest of these are. And now what that's done is that has fixed this section. Notice that if I click on one of these, this three up in the formula bar, it just says three now. It isn't the formula that was used to generate it. Same thing with this nine. It's fixed at nine. It's not a formula that says add up those two. Now I only did that to part of this, so some of these stay active. So now if you watch, I'm going to do another operation. And after I complete this operation, the spreadsheet's going to redo some of these cells that are active, but the cells that I did a copy paste special to are going to stay fixed. So I drag down a little bit and you'll notice that some of these have changed and some of them have stuck. So that's what the paste special will do for you. It will preserve your values if you need them to stay. Rand between We'll go ahead and generate random numbers. Now let's do the count if. Let's say in this total of dice rolls, I was interested how many times I rolled a seven. I can say equals, and then type in the word count if, and then parentheses. I'm gonna highlight this, 
And basically what this is telling the spreadsheet to do is go through this highlighted area and count how many times I rolled a seven. So I do a comma and tell it to look for a seven. So the first part of the count if is what's the range to look in. The second part is what am I looking for? And now when I hit enter, it tells me that there is one seven in that group. If I go back and change this seven to say uh, five and hit enter, well, by coincidence, there's only one five, but notice that some of these have regenerated. Now there's two sevens. So the count if is a way that you can go through a long list of data and count how many of whatever thing you care about exists. So I've fancied this up a little bit. Over here, I said I'm interested in finding a dice total five and six and seven and eight. How many times did it occur? Well, I look over here and I see that there's some fives. There's two fives. My eyeballs see it, but I put this program, count if, then I did my range, comma, I8. I didn't write a five. I referred to the cell I8, which has a five in it. If I change that five to, say, a nine, now I get a different total. There's one nine in there. I'm going to return it to the five. Remember, every time I'm doing an operation, some of these are updating and some of these are not. So you might get some weird events. Uh, a small word of warning, though. If I did this and I did the click, hold, and drag, I've accidentally made a mistake that I may not be aware of. Watch what happens to this range D8 to D20 as I go down to the next one that I drag to and the next one and the next one. So your eyeballs are up here at the D8 to D20. And you'll notice that I'm sliding that range because it was not fixed with dollar signs as I did the click, hold, and drag. So if I wanted it to stay, I'd put a dollar sign before and after each letter that fixes those. But I don't mind if the dice total I8 updates. So now when I slide this down, the D8 to D20 stays fixed. So this is telling me that in this part of my data, I have a dice total of eight once, a dice total of six four times. So in this little example that we've just done, we've seen that rand between will generate random numbers, pay special will stop the annoying updating of a cell if you want it to stay fixed, and count if is a magnificent counter so your eyeballs don't have to do the counting. But wait, there's more coming up. We're going to take a look at how to use 0 and 1 like a pro, and then just a reminder of your if-then. So I'm going to change scenarios. And what we're going to look at is, hey, what would happen if I wanted to think about flipping a coin? So we're going to flip a coin, and we're either going to get a heads or a tails. So in a simple case of just flipping a coin, we're going to do this clever thing. One is going to represent tails. Zero is going to represent heads. And if I look at flip number one, because in this scenario, I'm going to flip a coin three times in a row. If I look at flip number one, I get a zero, a head. But how did I get that? I can simply do this equals rand between and then do a zero comma one. That's really simulating a coin flip right there. And now I got a tails. I'm going to drag this over. And now I've just flipped a coin three times. If this thing will update for me, it just did. Okay, so I got tails, tails, tails in this case, and it's all random. And this is trial number one. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, I want another trial. So I'm going to do the previous trial plus one. It's a clever way to write a two. And I'm going to take these three. I'm going to drag them down. And now I got tails, tails, tails here. But notice my one above was active. I didn't do the copy paste special. So it stayed with one tail. Um, and over here, for the number of tails, here's what's clever about zero and ones. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to sum up the three flips. So in this case, a one and a one and a zero sum to two. 
because heads are going to count for zero and tails are going to count for one because of the clever little thing I did over here, then this number by just adding the three tells me the number of tails I have. And if I know how many tails I have, I can say, in this case, three minus the number of tails will tell me the number of heads that I have. Uh, this thing is running slow, of course, and it'll eventually tell me that that's a one. And let's see, I also have that thing set up over here. So now let's take a look at this part. In my scenario, I'm saying, what is the probability of flipping exactly two heads in a series of three coin flips? So I write a little if then statement to tell me if it's a success or not. A sex success is two heads. So I have this if then statement up here. If G4 equals two, and in this case, if the number in this cell equals two, then I say, yes, I have a success. If not, no, it's not a success. So this one down here should not be a success. I'm gonna click, hold, and drag. Keep in mind, this thing's gonna probably update and change my randomness. And of course, we're in, oh, now I have no successes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this down I'm going to pause this while I do this. I'm going to drag it down to do about maybe 20 trials. So I've went ahead and dragged this down. I did 16 trials and based on these trials I can see how many successes I had. Now my eyeballs could go ahead and count those up or I could use count if. And by the way this thing is totally active right now. It's totally random. So I'm going to now fix it. I'm going to do an edit, copy, and then I do a paste special. In this case, I'll just do values. And now this thing is fixed. It's no longer random. From this big pile of data, and it's not really that big, I now have run the simulation of flipping a coin three times in a row. I'm going to now use count if and some Excel knowledge to go ahead and put my results over here in this little area. So I've now summarized this chart over here. I did the number of occurrences by doing a count if statement to read through this column to count the number of zeros, ones, twos, and threes. And just for giggles, I went ahead and found the percent of each of these. So now I can answer this question for myself. What is the probability of flipping exactly two heads in a series of three? Two heads occurred six times, which is 37.5%. So perhaps that is a good approximation of the real probability. Um, I wouldn't trust 16 trials, but if I did 1,600 trials, I probably would trust it. Um, and by the way, I could also count up the number of successes by doing the count if, just like I did over here. So you take, oops. So you take a look, I did the count if statement. Oops, sorry. Um, but instead of counting the number, hmm, I'm messing this up here. Let me restate this. I got the number of successes by counting how many times the word yes showed up in this column. So look at how I did that. I had to put in parentheses, look for the word yes instead of the number six. Over here, when I found the number of successes, I used a count if statement and I was looking for that range in this column, I was looking for the number of twos that showed up. J7 represented a two. So that's, that's your new Excel learning, and you're gonna apply them to simulations. And basically, you're gonna try to devise a basic setup like I had there, but you're gonna go for a thousand trials or even more than a thousand trials and you're going to try to find the probability or the percent probability or any other type of problem by simulating through a spreadsheet the randomness that would occur in this actual event. Um, you're free to go your own way. Different people will set up different simulations, but in the end, you'll be using random generation from a spreadsheet to try to get an answer for a real world problem that your brain might not be able to grind through just by regular math power. As you're setting up these situations, scenarios and simulations, remember that trial and error and redoing is always okay in Excel. Enjoy.